time. Yes, happy, happy homework time is here again. So let's jump right into lesson 23 homework. Uh, jotting our name down at the top of the paper. How's this? I'll put my name and you put yours. And for the date, let's do something similar. I'll write today's date. And you write the actual date. Today's date. You write the actual date where and when you are in this universe. And so our instructions for number one, explain your thinking. So we can just explain with words, or we can use division to answer the following. And so all these are, is blank a factor of blank? So let's look at the first one. A, is two a factor of 72? So remember that factors are the numbers you multiply. When you're multiplying, in multiplication, the numbers being multiplied are called factors. So when you say is 2 a factor of 72, you say what you're really asking is, can I multiply 2 by another whole number and get a product of 72? 2 times what is 72? So is 2 a factor of 72? Yes, we could tell in a glance and we can explain our thinking. We don't need division here, although we could. But uh, So yes, we need to answer the question, yes comma. And how do we know this? Because, well, 72 is an even number, isn't it? And all even numbers are evenly divisible by 2. And that's exactly what we can write, because 72 is even and all even numbers, and this is a mathematical truth, Yes, I'm using the word all in the literal sense. All, even numbers, are divisible, which means they can be evenly divided by, divisible, by 2. Divisible is different from invisible, okay? Um, in fact, we, we use this word in the Pledge of Allegiance, right? One nation under God, indivisible. We say that the, the country cannot be divided. It's indivisible. So something that's divisible can be divided. Interesting, huh? So it's 2 a factor of 73. Well, we can use the same logic here. We can say no because it's, that's right, it's odd. So no is the answer to a question. No, because 73 is odd and odd numbers, I could have said all odd numbers, but odd numbers generally, are not divisible by two. And that's by definition. All right, so is 3 a factor of 72? Well, now, because we're not dealing with is 2 a factor, the whole even-odd thing is irrelevant. Even-odd doesn't matter now. We're just asking, is 3 a factor of 72? Can we multiply 3 by some whole number and get 72 as a product? Well, let's see. I think division is the way to go here. So if we want to find out, we simply divide 72 by 3. And if we end up with no remainder, then yes, it's a factor. So 3, how many 3's in 7? There are 2 3's in 7, because 2 times 3 is 6. We subtract that out, and we are left with 1, and we still have these 2. And again, to go back to our donut analogy, we had 7 boxes of 10 donuts. We gave those three people two boxes each, so we handed out six boxes of ten donuts. See, it's in the tens place, right? That's why I'm saying six boxes of ten, six tens. That leaves us with one box of ten donuts and two loose donuts. That's why we bring down the two, because we have a box of ten we're opening up to hand them out, and then two loose donuts. So how many donuts will these three people get of the twelve donuts? How many will they receive each? Yes, they will get 4 each. And why is that? Because 4 times 3 is 12. And when we subtract, scraping bottom here, we get 0, which means yes. And so now the division is my because. So I don't have to write anything more than answering the question as yes. 
because if I wanted to, I could say 24 times 3, and this is my check as well, but this proves it, indeed is 72, right? 3 times 4 is 12, regroup the 1, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 72, beautiful, to check a root. Is 2 a factor of 60? Now we can go right back to this first one because when we're dealing with 2, it's, it does become a matter of even and odd. So is 60 an even number? Yes, indeed you do, it is. So yes, 2 is a factor of 60 because, and it's going to read very much like uh, part A there, because 60 is even and all even numbers are divisible by 2, or I could say uh, have 2 as a factor, but I want you to learn the word divisible. Boom! There we go. There's 1a through d. There's more to 1, so let's scroll on down and scroll on. And efgh is just more of the same. Notice, though, in none of these are we looking at is 2 a factor, so the whole even odd has nothing to do with these. Now we're, we will have to use division on each of these unless, and you see it will be so, there's another logic we can apply without needing to resort to the cruelties and barbarity of division. So let's look at is 6 a factor of 72? Well, here we go. Division will prove it so. So if we take 72 and divide it by 6, if we end up with no remainder, then yes, 6 is a factor of 72. So how many 6's in 7? Well, there is 1, because 1 times 6 is 6. We subtract out, and that leaves 1, combined with the 2 in the 1's place, is 12. 12 donuts to hand out now. 6 people, they will get how many donuts each? 6 times what is close to or equal to 12? Yes, 2, because 2 times 6 is 12. We subtract, we get 0. And you notice I'm going a little faster through division, resorting less to my donut analogy because I'm expecting you're pretty well understanding it. If not, rewind and go back and look at some of those previous lessons. Um, so is 6 a fac uh, factor of 72? Yes. And we can state it this way because 6 times 12 equals 72. And we don't really even have to do the multiplication because the division is the inverse of multiplication. So here is our multiplication. 6 times 12 is 72. Uh, the division proves it. And similarly here for is 4 a factor of 60, we can go ahead and divide 60 by 4. So how many 4s in 6? There is 1 because 1 times 4 is 4. We subtract. We're left with 2, which we combine with the 0 in the 1's place. So now we have 20 donuts to hand out um, to 4 people. How many will they get each? In other words, 4 times what is close to or equal to 20? Yes, 4 times 5 indeed is 20. So when we subtract, we're left with 0, and that tells us that, yes, 4 is a factor of 60. So we'd say yes, because... 4 times 15 equals 60. And the division proves the multiplication. So now in this case, is this one's a little different. It's 5 a factor of 72. Yes, we could use division, but we don't have to because we know that all multiples of 5 end with a 0 or a 5, don't they? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. They all end with the 0 or 5. So is 72 a multiple of 5? No. That means 5 is not a factor of 72. Uh, so we can just simply say no because, and we haven't gotten into multiples yet, but you are familiar with them just because it's the same as skip counting, because all multiples of 5, And we can put in parentheses, I'll teach you, for example, 
based on a Latin phrase is EG. For example, 5, 10, 15, 20, and in 0, and I'm going to write out the word 0, so it's not confused with a, an O, and in 0 or 5, and let's be totally blatantly clear here, and 72 does not. It ends in a 2, obviously. Now, let's go to the next one. Is 8 a factor of 60? Hmm, intriguing question. We just did this 4 factor, and we said it was. So how about 8? Well, let's give it a shot here. Now, this one's interesting because we say, well, how many 8s in 6? And it's 0. And we need not write the 0 in the tens place there. It's just not the way it's done. It's not the convention for division ever to write the 0 there in the tens place in a case like this. So now you say, well, how many 8s in 60? Well, you know your multiplication facts, so you know that 8 times, well, 8 times 8 is 64. That's too much, right? 8 times 10 is 80. That's way too much. So 8 times, ah, yes, that's it. 8 times 7 is 56, which we subtract, and you get, yes, 4, and that's it. We have 4 donuts and 8 people, so those are leftover donuts, so they get 7 each with a remainder of 4. So, is there a number we can multiply 8 by to get 60? Is 8 a factor of 60? No, it's not, because when we divide it, we end up with a remainder. Okay, so we would say no. 8 is not. We want to be totally clear on this one, because this one's different from all the other ones we've done so far. It is not a, wow, sorry for the messiness. It is not a factor of 60 because, important word there, um, 8 times 7 is 56 with a remainder of 4, which is to say that 60 is not evenly divisible by 8 because there's a remainder. Excellent! So that's just number 1. Yeah. All right, let's go on to number 2. Number 2, I like this one. I love the cute little associative property, which we're going to use to find more factors of 12 and 30 um, because they get, they say more because they're giving us at least one or two here at the beginning. They're saying, hey, we all know 12 is 6 times 2. And so now you see the parentheses, what times 2? Well, that's the 6, right? So what times 2 is 6? Ah, yes, 3 times 2 is 6. You see how that works? And then we can uh, use the associative property here to change the parentheses so that we're looking at 2 times 2. Well, what's three? Uh, we have the 3 there then, right? So 3 times 2 times 2 is the same as, that's what equals mean, is the same as 3 times 2 times 2, okay? Because we're just associating them differently. We're saying 3 times 2, we're saying 2 times 2. And so now, if we look at this, okay, 3 is 3, say it's the same. Ah, 2 times 2 in parentheses is 4. Ah, yes, and which, of course, 3 times 4 is 12, which is kind of how we just check it out. Um, and they don't have you do this, but I'm going to do it. Um, so now when we write out all the factors we found here, look, we know 1 and 12, so we'll start with 1. Obviously, 2 is a factor. It's given to us. We found 3 to be a factor. There it is. We discovered 4 to be a factor. They gave us 6 as a factor. And, of course, 1 times 12, so 12 is a factor. There's our list of factors for 12. And you see, look, this is where we deduce that 3 is a factor of 12. And using associative property, we deduce that 4 is a factor of 12 as well. Now, this one's pretty obvious, but when you're dealing with larger numbers or kind of tricky numbers where you can't see the factors as easily, um, this is a very helpful way of doing it. We used to do, in the olden days, like factor trees, they were called, where you essentially do this. All right, so let's look at 30 is what times 5? Well, you know your facts, so you know it's 6 times 5. And 6 we could rewrite as what times 3? Yes, 2 times 3. 
And using the associative property, we can swap which numbers are associated by moving those parentheses and parenthesize 3 times 5 instead, leaving the 2 on his own. Poor little 2, all lonely now. 3 is run off with 5. So the 2 stays the same, and 3 times 5 is 15, which again equals, this is just kind of a check, 30, which is what we started with. And now if you look at the list of factors we've deduced here, well, we know 1 and 30 always, right? We figured out 2 because 6 is 2 times 3. Oh, and that's where we got the 3 as well. And we figured out 3 times 5, so we can write down 5. Uh, one that we did not deduce, but we could have, this right line right here, we could have rewritten as 3 times 2 times 5, right? Using the commutative and the associative property all at once, which is equal to 3 times 10, correct? And so in our list of factors, we have this 3 here, so that the 3 would be 3 times 10 is 30. So that one we did not deduce, but it is a factor of 30. And then, of course, we have the 15 we figured out, and then 30 itself. See, so there are the list of factors of 30. Pretty cool, huh? It's like solving a puzzle. Love it. Well, we're rounding the midpoint of homework time here, coming around to number three. Let's hit it. All right, number three is another interesting puzzle to be solved. I love that. This is one thing I love about Eureka Math here is that we did multiplication, and we kind of got a taste of division. Then we have this little diversion to factors and multiples and prime and composite, which is like the perfect little bow tie on the present that is multiplication and division. And then we'll return shortly, you'll see, to division and solving word problems with division and such. I just love the way this, this kind of segues in with that. So in class, you remember that, right? We use the associative property, which is just how you group numbers, okay, to show that when six is a factor, then two and three are factors. And to understand that any number that has six as a factor also has 2 and 3 as factors. For example, like take, I don't know, 18. 6 is a factor of 18, right? Is 2 a factor of 18? Yes, because 2 times 9 is 18. Is 3 a factor of 18? Yes, because 3 times 6 is 18. And you will find that the reason this works is that 6 equals 2 times 3, right? So any number that has 6 as a factor also has 2 and 3 as a factor. And it says because 6 equals 2 times 3. So use the fact now, this, now we're going to do a similar but different th idea, okay, here. So same idea, really, uh, but different numbers. Use the fact that 10 equals 5 times 2 to show that 2 and 5 are factors of 70, 10, and 90. In other words, any number, any number that has 10 as a factor also has 2 and 5 as a factor. And if you skip count by tens, you see it's true. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. All of those have 10 as a factor, and therefore they also have 2 and 5 as a factor. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to say 70, we're given is 10 times 7. Well, look, 10 is what? There it is, 5 times 2. So we'd say in parentheses, 10 is 5 times 2 and we just keep the time 7 as it is, right? This is still a true statement. And now we can use the associative property to say 70 is 5 times 2 times 7, right? It's still true. It still equals 70. And so, of course, that would tell us then that 70 equals 5 times, well, what's 2 times 7? 14. And, of course, you're going to tell us that then 5 times 14 equals 70. And we could have done this differently, of course, as well. We could have written it as uh, 2 times 5 times 7. In other words, 2 times 35, which indeed, again, is 70. So two ways to do it. And that is our demonstration there, that 5 and 2 are factors of 70. And so same thing here with 80. So this is going to be pretty easy, you see. We're going to kind of blast through this here that uh, the 10 there, and just for who odds, let's, let's reverse it this time. Let's do it as 2 times 5 instead of 5 times 2, right? It'll make no difference. You see, it still works. Times 8, right? We're just decomposing the 10 as 2 times 5, right? Just factoring it out. 
So then 80 is equal to 2 times, well, let's use the associative property to change the groupings, 5 times 8. So is this true, that 80 equals 2 times, well, what's 5 times 8? It's 40. So is that equal to 80? Yes, indeed it is. So that means 5 and 2 are factors of 80 because 10 is a factor of 80. So when we look at 90, we're going to do the exact same thing. Sorry, this one's kind of easy, isn't it? Let's do 5 times 2 again this time, times 9. So we just factored out the 10 as 5 times 2. That means 90 equals, and we use the associative property to say, well, we'll change the grouping of the numbers. Instead of 5 times 2 in parentheses, we'll do 5 times 2 times 9. So 90 equals 5 times, oh, I wrote 19. Sorry about that. Squiggle that out. Hey, the day you stop making mistakes is the day I'll stop. How's that? All right, so 2 times 9 is what? <laughs> is 18. Now, you might not be able to glance at this and, and tell quite as easily that 5 times 18 is 90. Um, so you can either trust me that it is, uh, or we could do it out here, which is no problem. Watch how quick and easy this is. 5 times 8 is 40. Regroup that 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. There's 90. And we could have done that back here with the 14 times 5 as well. That 5 times 4 is 20. Regroup that 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 70. And here I don't think we really needed to do 2 times 40 broken out. I think that's pretty apparent. Excellent. So number 3 is done, and we are rounding the bend. On the end of homework time, let's uh, knock off number four and call it a day. Hey, what do you say? Hey, yeah. All right, so number four has us apply this logic to a, a true and false statement situation um, to understand really how this whole uh, factors and divisibility rules, how it all works and how it fits together, how the numbers interact. So uh, our instructions are that the first statement is false. Okay, let's look at that. If a number has 2 and 6 as factors, then it has 12 as a factor. So they're telling us that is false. That is wrong. That is not so. Okay, that if a number has 2 and 6 as factors, it automatically has 12 as a factor. That is not so. However, it tells us the second statement here is true, that if a number has 12 as a factor, then both 2 and 6 are factors. So a number that has 12 as a factor will automatically, guaranteed, every time, without fail, have both 2 and 6 as factors. That is true. So now we need to explain why using words, pictures, or numbers. Okay, so one way to do this is uh, with an example. So if a number has 2 and 6 as factors, then it has 12 as a factor. Well, we can use plenty of examples here we could uh, use 6 itself. Look, 6 is equal to 2 times 3, right? So what are factors of 6? So factors of 6, uh, we can also say, let's, let's just be totally clear here, are 1 times 6. Let's not forget that. So factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So this has 2 and 6. So 2 and 6 are factors, but not 12. Of course, because, I mean, just obviously in this case, because 6 is less than 12. So how could I have 12 as a factor? But even a number that's greater than 12, it might not be so. That if you skip count by 6, you'll find some examples. Okay, 6 doesn't have 12 as a factor. 12 does have 12 as a factor, right? Because 1 times 12 is 12. 18, skip counting by 6, 18. Oh, 18 does have 2 and 6, but oh, we can do that one as well. So we can say that 18 equals 6 times 3, which is saying that 18 equals, well, what's 6? We already wrote it down. 2 times 3 times 3. So what are our factors of 18? 
Well, we know one in itself. I don't even have to really write it out. Factors of 18 are 1, and we then deduce 2, 3, 6. Now, 2 times what? If we, re if we use the associative property here, we could see it's 2 times what? 3 times 3, which is 9, right? 2 times 9 is 18. And then, of course, 18 itself. So those are all the factors of 18. And look, we can use our same explanation here. Look, 2 and 6 are factors, but not 12. Okay, so we have two cases here. So we cannot say that all numbers have 2 and 6 in factor as factors has, have 12 as a factor. However, now we can prove the second statement true. All right, so I'm going to draw a little number here. Uh, a number? <laughs> a line here. Dividing. So this, this all proves, let's be clear, this all pertains to the first statement, which is false. Okay, now we want to look at the second statement, which is true. So we want to prove now that this statement, this second, second statement here, is true. So if a number has 12 as, as a factor, then both 12 and 6 are factors. So let's take a number that has 12 as a factor. We could start with 12 itself, right? Okay. So 12 is equal to, well, let's start with the obvious, with 1 times 12, right? So let's think about 12. Well, it could be 1 times 2 times 6. Ah, so there we see 2 times 6. So we, right there we see that, um, that 12 is a factor and 2 and 6 are factors. So we, we can just draw a little arrow here and here and say 2 6, 12 are factors. And in fact, it's going to be true of any number. If we skip count by 12, we can go, say, 24. Um, well, let's do 24. So 24 is equal to 1 times 24, right? That's a good starting place. And we could say, well, that's equal to 2 times 12, right? And we can factor out the 12 as 2 times 6. We could also do 3 times 4, it's true. But I want to do 2 times 6 because right there you see, look, 2, 6, and 12 are factors. There we go. So there we go. We've proven that a number that has 12 as a factor and both 2 and 6 are factors. Now, I mean, to, to do this out, um, you would you would have to use a little more algebra to say that any multiple of 12, uh, so any number times 12 is going to be the same as that number times 2 times 6. So this is what that would look like. So any number times 12, which means any, any multiple of 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 12, 3 times 12, any number times 12 is equal to that number times 2 times 6. Right there, that, that algebraic sentence proves that if 12 is a factor, then both 2 and 6 are factors. So this, we gave two specific examples, but two specific examples do not prove anything. Because I could have given many examples over here for this false statement that make it seem true when it's not. So this, however, this proves it. This says any number times 12 is equal to that number times 2 times 6, which demonstrates that 2 and 6 are factors every time that 12 is a factor. Beauteous! Boy, did we have a good time! Well, this homework session is complete. I will see you next time, once again, when it is homework time. Yeah.